Hi everyone, I'm Christy, and today we're going to show you how to set up a portable solar recharged battery system so you can have power wherever you go. Whether you tell your friends you're roughing it or you're a self-confessed glamper, you probably still want to be able to use some of your electronic devices. As many people have devices that run either from a 12 volt car cigarette lighter socket or a USB port, you can use a solar panel to charge a battery that will run these devices. We'll show you how. The choice of solar panel is determined by how much you draw from the battery in total versus how much the solar panel can charge the battery during sunlight. If you want to draw 5 amps for 3 hours at 13.8 volts, which is the battery voltage that often a 12 volt battery runs at, then you're going to draw a total of around 70 watts. However, charging a battery is nowhere near 100% efficient. If you assume around 9 hours of effective sunlight, and remember the solar panel is not effective all the way from dawn until dusk, but only when strong enough sun shines on it, then we can divide 70 watts by 9 to give us around under 8 watts per hour. But because battery charging isn't 100% efficient, and a lot of the power is not actually stored, but converted to heat and gases, this means that around a 20 watt solar panel will do the job in ideal conditions. However, many people want to draw much more power than this, and your setup ideally needs to cope with days that may be partly cloudy, or even very short days in winter. For this reason, it's always better to go overboard on your solar panel and battery, and choose your limits by the physical size and what's affordable to you. For this demonstration, we chose a 100 amp hour gel lead acid battery. A battery box to house it that has battery terminals for solar panel input. It has USB ports and 12 volt outlets or cigarette lighter socket outlets. It has a voltage display so you know what's going on with the battery. And it also has a master off switch, which is also an overload protection circuit breaker. We also chose a 120 watt folding solar panel. This has a rigid aluminium frame designed to be rugged enough to be portable, folds in half to save space, and most importantly, this particular panel has a solar charge controller built in. Not all solar panels are created equal. Many cheap portable solar panels don't have a charge controller and simply feed power directly into the battery. This panel features folding aluminium stands so we can face the panel towards the sun and a PWM charge controller. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. It's a safe and efficient method for charging, keeping things cost effective. This one is pre-wired with a five meter cable with an Anderson plug on the end of it. The solar charge controller will stop your batteries from being overcharged and avoid your battery from discharging at nighttime if you leave it connected. The battery box comes with a nylon strap, which is used to hold the battery securely in the box. Before installing your battery, feed the webbing strap through the retention strap inside the battery box lid. Put the lid back onto the box with the clip hanging out on the front. Then we feed the strap through the holder on the back, wrap underneath through this recess, and then back up through the holder on the front. You then thread the strap into the back of the side release buckle. With the strap in place, we can install the 100 amp hour battery. Before we do, take note of the positive and negative battery terminals. The red positive terminal on your battery needs to match where this red power cable goes, shown here underneath the lid. Get your battery and battery box into the best position to make the installation easier. Carefully lift the battery and gently lower it into the box. Next, remove the bolts on the battery terminals connect the positive and negative power wires and do the bolts back up finger tight. Use a 14 mm spanner or socket with an extension bar, as we're doing here, to do the nuts up firmly, but not too tight to avoid damaging the thread. 
To secure the battery inside the box, we need to do up the retention strap firmly. The battery box features a handle on the top and handles on the sides. We recommend you use the side handles because the top one is not strong enough to cater for the weight of a 100 amp hour battery. These terminals on the battery box are where we need to connect our solar panel. The lead on our solar panel has a 50 amp Anderson connector. The solar panel is also supplied with an Anderson to alligator clip lead and an Anderson to eyelet lead. This eyelet lead is going to be the most practical for us because it will attach to the charging bolts on the battery box. If you find the eye terminals are too small for the bolts on the battery box, you will need to drill them to make the hole larger. Connect the red positive lead to the positive terminal on the battery box, then hand tighten the wing nut to firmly secure it. Repeat this with the black negative lead to the negative terminal. This Anderson connector is where we can connect our solar panel to charge the battery inside. Unfold the solar panel and stand it up by swinging out the legs. Then, it's just a matter of aligning the Anderson connectors and pushing them together firmly. If we are in the great outdoors, we would now turn the solar panel to face the sun for optimum charge. While we're not making this video outdoors, the bright lights here in our studio are enough for the solar panel to think there is a little bit of sunlight. These LED indicators show that the battery in our battery box is charging. Using our 120 watt panel in full sunlight, we should have a fully charged battery within a couple of hours. If your battery had heavier than normal discharge, then we may need to leave it connected to get a full day's sunlight. This battery box has a digital voltmeter built in. Here, we can see the battery voltage is 12.8 volts DC. This will increase the longer we leave the solar panel in the sun, until the solar charge controller determines that the battery is fully charged. One final note is to point out that you should always keep your gel battery charged. If it goes below 11 volts, it can be damaged and never be able to be recharged. Congratulations, you now have a powerful, fully portable, solar recharged battery box. A few tips before we finish. Tip one, keep the battery topped up whenever possible. Especially if you're not using it during winter, pop it in the sun once a month for a top up. Tip two, you can easily connect a power inverter to provide you with mains power output to run your mains only device. Simply connect it to the battery terminals. Tip three, optionally, you can purchase a mains charger to keep things topped up while the system is in storage to avoid remembering to keep things charged yourself. While it would likely be fine, it helps keep your battery running for years to come.